So you got invited into the house and now it's time to close the deal. Well, guess what? In this video, I'm going to be showing you the top three closing mistakes that so many people make unconsciously and how you can avoid them. Let's go for a walk. First thing is connecting with your prospect, building a relationship and not jumping straight into business. I'll give you an example. Hey, would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, I'd love one. Hey, taking up the kind gesture, because what do you do? Someone, if I walk into their house and I say, yes, that's a, an act of friendship, an act of a relationship, and I might even compliment them to start to connect and build rapport. Beautiful kitchen, by the way. Love the backsplash. So that's the first thing that people often overlook is they'll jump right into things. And then they, they go right in like they're here for business, but you can't do that. Connect on a human level, a great thing if someone offers you something like a cup of coffee or, or water or beverage, always say yes, even if you don't want it, because it's a very deep connection that happens subconsciously when someone offers you a drink and you accept it, because that's what friends and family do. Compliment them on their home, the landscaping, the car, the boat, their kitchen, the dog, anything at all that you have common ground with. So that's mistake number one. Don't go straight in. By the way, I ran a sales appointment with a guy the other day and he went straight in for the kill, like out of the gate, like, hey, I'm here with so-and-so, we're here to inspect your roof, we're gonna hop up right now and go do this. And I'm like, dude, take a breath. You're a human, you're here to help. It's conversational sales. People buy from who? People they know, like, and trust. So take a few moments to develop that rapport and connect with your prospects. Good espresso, by the way. Brings me to number two, and that's not drawing questions out. So many new salespeople specifically, and even sales reps that are seasoned, they'll spend all this time delivering the presentation, delivering the pitch, and getting really aggressive on getting their their two cents out, right? And saying, oh, well, this is how we can help and this is how the process works. But you gotta slow down. Does this all make sense to you, Mr. Homeowner? Any questions for me so far? Great. Now, with everything I've covered, does everything all make sense? I know this is all new and it's a lot of information take, to take in. Pause every now and again, because if you're not drawing those questions out, what you're doing is the opposite. You're pushing them back in. And then people start to freak out because then they feel like they're being pushed and sold. And even though you may not be trying to be pushy, the way that it feels to the homeowner is that you're pushing the sale aggressively. And then when it comes time for you to ask for the business or try to get the contingency agreement signed or the contract inked, what happens is homeowners panic and they freeze. And then inside their mind, they're like, he didn't answer this question, he didn't answer this question. Are they gonna tarp the garden? What about the pool? What about the dogs? And all these questions aren't answered. Do you know what people do? They don't even know what it is. They say, I'm not comfortable, I don't trust him, I don't like him. So to solve mistake number two, Pause in your presentation. Ask for questions to come out. I promise you it will make the world of a difference. And that brings me to number three, the most important of all. And what is that? Asking directly for the business. Not, what do you think about it? Is this something you like? Do you like our company? Uh-uh-uh. Straight to the point. Is this something that you'd like our company to handle on your behalf? With everything you've heard, do you trust our company to take care of this for you? All right, any questions before we talk next steps? Great, now we move into the contingency agreement. We go through it, which by the way, I'm gonna put a link to a card right here. And in that card, you're gonna watch the contingency agreement playlist and how you can use that contingency agreement as a sales tool. And you walk through those points and say, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, I'd love to get started with this project for you right away. Are you comfortable selecting us as the contractor of choice to move forward? Yes or no. You'll see all those different examples. They're crystal clear yes or no. They're not loosey-goosey. So what do you think? And that's what so many new salespeople do. They wait around and they're like, okay, you know, well, I showed it to you. Like they're just waiting for the homeowner to throw themselves and sign the document, but they don't do that. You need to direct the conversation. Think of it like uh, giving directions to a child. You can't say they walk into the house, you know, we'd really love to keep the floors clean, kiddo. Like it's over their head. You gotta say, kid, take your shoes off, leave them right there. They need directions. It doesn't mean you're being rude. It just means you're controlling the dialogue. And the same goes with you and your homeowners. And you're not gonna, same thing when you, you finish your coffee, you're not just gonna like leave it here and go walk out, you're gonna ask where should I place my coffee cup for you? And they're gonna say, hand it to me, leave it here, but they, it's a very clear direction. So if you think about the clarity in how we communicate, it's the basis of the entire conversational sales process. So to end and to ask for the business, you can do it in a variety of different ways, which I'm gonna recap right now. But the, the underlying theme is it's a yes or a no answer. Yes or no, very direct. Would you like us to move forward with your roof project on your behalf? Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, everything you've seen so far, how does that sound? Good, 
Okay, now we can continue. Excellent, would you like us to move forward with the roof on your behalf? Yes, Mr. Homeowner, are you comfortable selecting us as the contractor of choice to move forward on your behalf? Yes, here's another way. Would you like us to get started on this project for you right away? Yes, excellent, all we'll need to do is get your autograph here and here. Boom, sign it, you keep the copy, done and done. So there it is. Those are the three common mistakes that people make with closing that by becoming aware of, you can stop and fix very easily. Let's do a quick recap. Number one, build rapport, connect with your customers, accept an offer for coffee or water or a beverage, even if you don't want it, because it builds a human connection. Compliment people on their home, their kitchen, the outside, a vehicle, their garden, the dog. Find a way to connect as a human and don't jump straight into business. It gets a little too aggressive. Mistake number two is not inviting questions to be asked. Don't freak out, don't worry, don't say, oh, well, if I just go through it, then they'll say yes. It's the opposite of how it works. Invite questions. You want objections. You want to understand what's important to your prospects. You can answer them. And number three is ask directly for the business. Did you like this video? If you did, click the thumbs up right now so other people know that you liked it and then click subscribe. You see that? Which by the way, it'd be great if you did that. But either way, now you know these three mistakes that you can fix right now to start closing more sales. And if you want additional help to start generating sales, generating your own leads, and following a step-by-step -step strategy to smash your income goal in the next nine months, then click the video description right now and then see where it says your complete sales strategy. Take a peek. Check out that program and get instant access to start your journey making more sales. Thanks for joining me on this video. We'll see you on the next one.